Greetings and welcome to Hexed Encountered. My name is Joe. In this video, we're going to be doing a play example of the game North Africa 41, the Western Desert, March to December 1941. This is designed by Mark Simonich and is published by GMT Games. This is the newest in the 4X series, all from designer Mark Simonich. And this is a long running series that's covered many different battles and campaigns of the Second World War. And this newest one takes the action to the desert. But basically the turn the turns are two turns per month. And the game starts at the end of the well, yes, it starts with the third impulse, because each turn has three impulses. And within those impulses there are several phases, and we'll talk about that as we go through the playthrough. But the game begins with impulse number three of the second turn of the of uh, the month of March. And then progresses through April. So there's two turns in April, two turns in May, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Now, the I did say there were there were three impulses in the summer months. There are actually only two impulses. So let's get this underway. Okay, so we've moved down to the western side of the map, Libya, as you can see. So right here, this box is the Tripoli box. It's kind of covered with units, but if I move some of these around, you can see that it says Tripoli on it. And it says supply points and non-mechanized units may only exit box by naval transport or if trucked. So basically this represents the, the Axis forces that are off map to the west. The Allies have a similar box in the Nile Delta, which has the same rules, except that they have rail transport because they have a rail line that actually runs from the Nile Delta up to Mersa Matru, which is on the other side of the map, and we'll, we'll see that in a bit. But anyway, the units that are in this box... <clears throat> If they're mechanized units or armored units, they can come off there and get directly onto the map. Anybody else has to use trucks, which are these units right here, or these counters right here, rather. So there are three of them in the German box. The Allies have um, one of their own at the current time. We also have some on the map. So you can see there's one here and one here. When they're on this side, the MSU side, that means they are a supply unit and they can actually provide supply for attacks which is something that we'll see in a bit. Okay, so as we start, the first thing we do, there are several phases within each turn. There are the initial phase, the movement phase, the combat phase, the recovery phase, and the supply phase, and the delay marker phase. Okay, so we start obviously, as you might guess, in the initial phase, which has several different things that happen in it. There's an event table that you roll against, then you have replacements, Completion of forts, which you would roll a die to see if any construction is completed that you had begun in an earlier impulse. And you remove any uh, transport markers, whether it's rail, air, or naval, from the previous impulse. In this case, the Germans only have to worry about the event phase since we're just starting out. Nothing else needs to be taken care of. So they roll a 7, and we take a look at the event chart for the Germans, or <laughs> I keep doing it, and I'm gonna probably keep doing it. So here you see the event tables, and the event table has an allied side and an axis side, and you roll, and you roll, and we roll the seven, so that's in the five to nine range, which is OKW, record one resource point on your resource point track. A resource point, tr point track is up here. We just slide this guy down one, to indicate that we have one resource point, and that takes care of that roll. Now, the next thing we're going to do is we have our limited forces that are actually at the front right here. We have the 5th Light Division, which is German, and we have the Brescia Division, which is Italian. We're going to actually move this whole stack up to because they're going to attack this guy right here. Now, this in this hex right here, we have the Africa Corps Headquarters. And we also have uh, a supply and a truck. And then we have our Brescia division. So we're gonna move these guys up here because they're going to attack. And then we're gonna move the Brescia unit up right behind them. Now in our Tripoli off map box, we have some units that can come off on their own because they're mechanized. They can come out of here and get onto the map. So we'll take our mechanized units and move them onto the map. And then we'll take the one of the trucks. So we have three truck units here. 
as you can see, two, three, and four, they are numbered. And we can take them, it doesn't really matter which one is which, but you can take them and use them to carry other units off. And they can each carry basically one unit. So if we take two of these to carry our Bologna unit, which is right here, consists of two infantry, I believe. See, I'm having trouble with my tweezers. So we have these two infantry, they're gonna come onto the map and they're going, that requires the usage of two trucks. And then this third one can be used to carry a supply point. So these come onto the map as well. Now these guys can actually move up to here. Now here in the HQ under our Africa Corps unit, as I mentioned, we have a truck. It is going to return to the box, leaving behind its one supply point here. Okay, so that's pretty much all the movement that the Germans have, <laughs> that the Axis has to do in this first turn for the third impulse, the movement phase. So that completes their movement phase. We go to the combat phase. Now you can support, you can support your combat or your attacks rather with supply. If you have a supply point and, or an HQ or something like that along nearby. So we do have a supply point that's stacked with our Africa Corps head, headquarters right here. So that, what that does is it allows you to, to use more than nine attack factors. So you're kind of limited in how many attack factors you can apply to a combat unless you're using additional supply. Because that I, I'm assuming that that models the fact that supply was always an issue in, in this campaign because of the distances involved, involved the, you know, the, the conditions, et cetera, et cetera. Particularly on the Axis side because everything had to be shipped from Italy and the Royal Navy basically controlled the Mediterranean and Malta was there. And so it was, it was a big, it was a big deal for them to get supplies from Italy over to Africa. So basically you can use, as I said, you can use this supply. Whoops, butterfingers. You can use this supply chit here and expend it to bolster uh, the ability of these guys to attack. Because it, what, what we have here is way more than three, uh, or nine rather, com, assault, uh, attack factors. So here in this stack, we have five units plus an 88 flak gun. So I can show you what we have here. We have this guy. We have this guy. We have this guy, which is a tank. We have another tank, and as you can see, their attack factor is a nine. And then the, the two, the two superscript is tank quality, and higher is better. And then we also have this unit and the aforementioned 88 flak. But if you added up all those attack factors, it is greater than nine. So in order to use those, uh, and, the, and on the flip side, before I get too much further down into, we have a fortification here and we have this, this British unit, which is, uh, it gets its defense doubled from a three to a six because it's in fortifications. The two tank units for the Axis get their attack factors halved because of the fortifications. So if we add everything up, we get a 20 to six for the attack. So 20 for the, for the Germans, because it's only German, so I can say the Germans this time, and six for the British, which is three to one odds. But two of these units are elite. Actually, most of these units are elite now that I look at them. And if you have an elite infantry unit and an elite tank unit in the same attack, you get what's called the elite combined arms shift. So the elite combined arms shift gives you a shift to the right of one column. So if we look at our CRT... We would, be, we would normally be in this column based on our 20 to 6 odds, but we get shifted to the 4 to 1 column. Okay, and so you can see there's only 6, so we roll one die and look at this column and it'll tell us what we get. So the Germans roll and they get a 1, which is a bad roll. Okay, but with 4 to 1 odds, that's still 
a DR2 and advanced two, which is basically the defender retreats two hexes and the advance and the attackers advance two hexes. But the Germans have an asset, and his name is Rommel, and you can use this to re-roll. So if you we would flip him over to his used side and put him back on his available assets, and he'll get flipped after the turn is over. Flipped back to available. But what that lets us do is re-roll. So they re-roll, and guess what? They get a 2, which is the same exact result. It's a DR2 advanced 2. All right, now there's also a thing called determined defense. So a defender that does not want to retreat can employ the determined defense and risk additional casualties. And in this case, they didn't take any casualties, so they just have to retreat. So that this is, um, it's a way to delay because even if they, if they manage to hold, they can prevent the Germans from getting further down the road, which is what they want to do. So the allied player is going to elect to do a determined defense. So he's going to try to hold the, hold the hex and he rolls one die and will con consult the determined defense table. Now the de determined defense table, which is right here in this, cor in this corner, you have different columns based on the terrain. Now obviously they're in fortification, so they use this, this one, which is the most favorable, of course. So he's gonna roll, and he rolls, whoops, he rolls a four. Okay, so here on our chart, a four in the fortifications column is H inside a box and then a dash slash one. The slash one indicates that that's one step of, of casualties or one step loss for the defender rather. And then down here we see that the boxed H is a successful hold, but the defender's fortification is removed. So basically what's gonna happen is that this, this is a one step unit. If we flip it over, the, the backside is, bla is blank, so he's eliminated. So there is an eliminated box and he's going in it. And then the fortification also goes away because of the uh, result of the determined defense. And be But because of that, instead of advancing two hexes, the Germans can only advance one hex. So that was the benefit of them doing the determined defense, although it ultimately cost them a unit. Okay, so that's called a limited advance. So now we have the Axis recovery phase, since that was the only combat we could do. And in the Axis recovery phase, if we had units that were disrupted or in retreat, we could, we could handle that, but we do not have that, so there is no recovery phase. Now we do supply phase, because again, supply is very important in this particular game because of the campaign that we're playing. And basically the way supply works in terms of checking it is if you're within five hexes of a road, like we have the Via Balbia here, that road connects to Tripoli for the Axis and it also on the other end connects to the Nile Delta for the Allies. So the Axis, so all of these units are sitting literally on the road. So they're all in supply. Now the, the, the British are also all in supply because even this guy here, one, two, three. He's only three hexes off the road, so he's also in supply. That doesn't matter during this phase because we're in the Axis side, but if it was the Allies we were checking, that guy, that guy would still be good to go. So next we have our delay marker phase. So basically what the delay marker lets you do is it increases the movement point to move through that hex. And... Um, so it's worthwhile to try and slow down your opposition. This is a delay marker. And the Germans currently have two, and the British have two as well, but one of theirs is already on the map, so they have one available. And we'll see that when we get into the British turn. But the, the markers represent fog of war, supply issues, snafus, and enemy roadblocks. And each player has two to, two to use, each impulse at no cost, cost in resource points so they increase the entry cost of the hex by one movement point for all enemy units they have no effect on tactical movement rail movement combat advance after combat retreat or supply paths axis delay markers don't affect axis units and allied delay markers don't affect allied units as you would expect you can't place them on or adjacent to an enemy combat or non-combat unit or a fortification marker they can't be 
adjacent to another friendly delay marker, and they can't be placed in an enemy-controlled port or airfield hex. So once you place them, you roll, you roll two dice, and you remove the delay markers with the ID of those die rolls. So if you roll a one or a two, you would remove your delay marker with that number. You can also voluntarily remove them, and they get removed automatically if they end up stacked with an enemy combat or non-combat unit. So if an enemy unit ends up in there at the end of the phase, you remove it, basically. is how. All right, so the Germans are going to place their two. So we're going to place one here, and we'll place the second one right down the road from it here. Okay, now the dotted lines here are tracks. It's not a full road. The full road is obviously this lot, this guy right here. Now we would roll our two dice, and we roll a two, or a one rather, sorry. We roll a one and a three. So the one marker gets removed. It goes back to the axis markers display, and there's a little display that you can use for both. So each side has one. Looks like this, and that's where your markers live. Okay, so now we go to the supply attrition phase because we've just finished the third impulse, so this is going to wrap up our turn here. And in the supply attrition phase, both players roll two dice and consult their table. And the Axis player rolls a six and the Allied player rolls a seven. I'm not going to show the die rolls. We're just using the example of play, as I said. So here is our supply attrition for the Axis and for the Allies. The Axis rolled one for Tobruk sector. They don't currently have anything in Tobruk. And the Allies rolled a seven, which is also Tobruk. So they lose one supply. This counter right here is called a, an ASU. And it gets flipped to its depleted side because of them rolling a seven there. The next step is the victory point phase. And since we're in turn one, the benchmark number for turn one is zero, and that's where our victory point track is currently, so there's really no, no effect from that. So now we go to turn two, and we start with the preparation phase. So each player at the start of the, of the turn gets two reinforcements, or I'm sorry, two supply points. So you would take a supply marker such as this one, and you'd put it in the Tripoli box for the Axis, and in the Nile Delta box for the allies. Then we have to deal with the Malta status. So this box, this track up here is the Malta status track. So they always roll at the start of each turn during the preparation phase. And if you roll a six, you'll move it to the far left box. And the Axis player rolls a three, so it would remain in the minus two box, which is where it is. See, that says minus two, that's where it is. All right. So this is a Malta, Malta Convoy modifier, basically, is what that says. Okay, the Rommel marker gets flipped back to its available side. Uh, surrender box, there are no units in the surrender box. And the surrender box is at the other side of the map. I'll shift the shot over there in a second. And there are no removals, withdrawals, or upgrades. The Germans do get two reinforcements this turn. So the Germans do get reinforcements this turn. I forgot to mention that. And here they are. They get an 88 and they get a motorcycle infantry unit as well. So they'll go in the Tripoli box. And now we're ready to start the British first. The imp impulse number one and the British will go first because the Allies go first in each impulse. All right. So here's the surrender box I mentioned earlier. Here's our Nile Delta box down here in the lower right corner. I need to adjust this stuff. So we're in turn number two. We are in impulse number one. We are in phase number one. Okay, so just as we did with the Germans, the Allies will roll for their event. And they roll a seven, which just as it did for the Germans, that provides them with one resource point. Their resource point track is here, so they have one resource point. Now replacements, they have a replacement pool here down here. In the initial phase here where it says use replacements, 
The replacements are listed on the turn track, and so both the British and the Germans will get one tank replacement this turn. So the British are going to take their tank replacement, which looks like this. And they're going to put it on the first RTR here. So this was a unit that started in the box for Allied Eliminated, which is right here, right here at the bottom. And it goes in the base box, which is our Nile Delta box. So it goes right there at the bottom right. Okay, so there are no markers. There's no forts. There's no markers. So we move to the movement phase. So the Allies now have a decision to make because... Do they start to skedaddle back towards Tobruk? Because Tobruk has this, these kind of pre-built defensive belt around it that they can use to kind of make a stand. Or do they want to play, play it tough and defend here to kind of at least be like a delaying action to keep the Germans from just rushing across either across the desert or along the coastal road? Because the coastal road, if you travel on the coastal road, each... Hex is only one quarter of a movement point. So if you have, for example, a tank or a, or a mechanized unit with a movement factor of five, they can essentially move uh, 20 hexes in a turn. And then you have extended movement, which would actually allow you to extend your movement points by three, which gives them another 12. So they could actually go 32 hexes in one turn, really motoring across. Now, keep in mind, each of these turns is basically 15 days. Or so. Okay, so in order to kind of st stiffen up our defense, we're going to move this guy here. We're going to move these two down into 1709 right here. And we're going to move this guy down the road as well. Now, as I said, he's got a movement factor of four, so four times four is 16. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. He's only got to go nine to get here. One nice thing on the map, they have these numbers, which are probably hard to see, but there's a three here and a four and a five. Each of these is four hexes. So it's from the number four as one, two, three, four, and then you get five. So that shows you if your movement factor, if you started on the end and went to and had could go and your movement factor was four, you could start here and actually get to the get to here. So that's kind of a useful, useful little thing that they threw on the map for us. Okay, so now we let's deal with Benghazi up here. Obviously, the Germans or the Axis are going to come up the Via Balbia, and they're probably going to get, you know, they're probably they're going to want to take Benghazi because Benghazi's got a decent sized port here. So what we're going to do is we have this first RNF unit here. We're going to move them into Benghazi and give them a mission of blowing up or doing demolition in the port. So what that does is allows them to damage the port because we assume the Axis is going to take it. And if we can damage it, every hit will move this one box to the right and make it less, lower its capacity and shipping points. So we do have a port demolition and bombing table. So you roll one die, a one or two is no effect, a three to six is a hit. So you roll one die for each each. Uh, box that's functioning. The zero obviously is not a functioning box. So you have two that are currently functioning. So you roll two dice and they roll a two and a five. So the two is nothing, but the five results in a reduction. So it goes down to one. And we have a truck unit in our Nile Delta and there's a rule called the special truck special transfer. And what that will let us do is move the truck directly to Benghazi where we'll be able to pick up our unit here because this is not a mechanized unit. So it's going to pick up that unit and carry it back east. All right, so we have an Australian unit. Uh, we have two Australian units, one here and one here. We're going, to use one, we're going to use one of our trucks to pick up this guy and then carry him down the road to here. And then this one is going to just kind of go on his own and use extended movement. So he can get to, to here and then along the road, he gets to here and then he stops. And then we'll take our ASU and it's going to use the road as well. 
and it's going to move down the road and get all the way over here to Tamimi and stop. So we're pulling our forces back, as you can see. Now, here in the Tobruk sector, the defenses are in poor shape. There's only the anti-tank ditch there, and that's what's record. That's what's uh, you know that's what these hashed hexes are. That's the uh, the anti-tank ditch, which is the base level of defenses. So we can spend our resource point as the allies, which is down here on the resource track, which is off map right now, or off shot right now rather. So we're going to put that back on zero, and we are going to use that to take a fortification building and we're going to put it right here so we're now constructing a fortification there so as i mentioned here's our resource track i moved it from one point to zero okay we have our our indian unit here in el adem we're going to have him move down the track to machili to kind of provide a defense here to prevent the germans from coming through the desert instead of just going along the road, because along the road is a longer path. It's, it's a little bit easier to defend up here because of terrain. That, so there is a way to just kind of go across the desert through the track. So we're going to stick our Indian brigade, brigade there to kind of forestall that particular strategy by the axis. So now let's take a look at the Matru sector, which is here. So we're going to send our, our Aussies here using naval transport, because we have a naval transport available. We're gonna ship them directly to Tobruk. And you have to put a naval transport marker on there. And that looks like this. It says coastal shipping on it. We drop that on there. They control all of the airfields. The allies control all six of the in-game in airfields. And each one of these is a minus one on the die roll for interception. So we, we would roll the dice. And so we have an anti-shipping table right here, okay? And we're going to Tobruk and it, it, he rolls an eight, okay? So the eight would be three, but when you take the minus six, it becomes a two and that's a dash, which means nothing. So as I said, it is possible, it would be possible to actually have something bad happen there, but it's extremely unlikely. Okay, so here we have our Nile Delta box. Now, just as was the case with the Axis and the Tripoli box, only mechanized units can actually take themselves out of the box and get onto the map. But the Allies do have the advantage of this rail line that you can see running along the map here that goes all the way out to Mursa Matru. Or Matra. I'm not sure how you pronounce that. I've been saying Matru, but that might be wrong. All right, so we're going to take this 22nd Guards Brigade unit, this guy right here. And we're gonna rail rail him all the way out to Mursa Matru. And we're gonna we, we're gonna move the reconnaissance battalion, which is this guy, the motorized battalion, which is this guy, and the reduced tank, which is this guy, along the coastal highway, a unit with a movement allowance of five that uses extended movement, which I mentioned already, can go 32. So here's our one. So to get from the box to there is, is one, and we can go all the way out to eight. So that would be, let me pick up everybody that's going here. Now, if you're wondering about extended movement, it only applies to mechanized units including those moved by a truck. So if you put an infantry unit on a truck, it can use extended movement. It increases their movement allowance by three movement points. Units that use extended movement may not enter an enemy zone of control. A unit that starts its move in an enemy zone of control can use extended movement as long as it exits the enemy zone of control with its first hex of movement. Non-mechanized units may not use an extend may not use extended movement. Instead, they receive a road bonus. As long as it spends its entire movement allowance along a track or a mixture of track and highway and doesn't start or move adjacent to an enemy unit, it can use four hexes instead of three, so it gets a bonus of one road hex. So that's for the non-mechanized units. Enemy non-combat units and combat units in full retreat do not slow down or prevent extended movement in any way. 
because those units don't exert a zone of control, you can basically ignore them and blow right past them. So that actually wraps up the Allied movement phase. There is no combat phase because they don't have any units that they want to do combat with. We go to the recovery phase. Nobody is disrupted or retreating, so we don't have to worry about that. In the supply phase, we check to see that everybody can, everybody's within five hexes of a road, which they are. So all the units are in supply. And then the delay marker phase. So the ally player has one delay marker available. So we can place the other delay marker. So we'll place the other delay marker here and we will roll two dice and we roll a, a four and a six. And unless you roll a one or a two, your markers do not get removed. Okay, so now we go to the German side and the Germans start with the initial phase. So the first thing they do is roll for an event and they roll an 11 and an 11 on the event chart is a bombing raid, select one enemy port and roll on the demolition bombing table, which is this guy right here. It's the same as what the British used on Benghazi. So the Germans roll, they get, they roll, they get a four and that results in one hit on Tobruk. So the Tobruk port status goes down. Replacements and fort completion, that's not needed at the moment. They do have a replacement available. There aren't any transport markers to remove. So we go to the movement phase. So we're going to move our two supply points, our two replacement units, and the reinforcements that were placed in the Italy box. Oops, I, forget, I put them in the wrong box. So these two guys were supposed to go up there, as well as the supply points. See, I screwed this up. Oh, they're up here. So that, those are the units that are in the Italy box that now have to get shipped to Tripoli from Italy. They sail to Tripoli. The current Malta convoy modifier is minus two. So the Axis player rolls two dice, a three and a two which is five, and that is easily enough to land safely at Tripoli. So again, you roll, you look here, Italy or Tripoli, you roll two dice, it was a five, and that's uh, even with the minus two, uh, well, with the minus two from Malta, it's, it's, it's safe. So all of those units get to move to the uh, Tripoli box. So, and you put them in this small box here because they can only move the movement from Italy to Tripoli, that's all they can do in this impulse. Okay, so the truck unit that started in the Tripoli box, which is this guy right here, he's gonna bring in a regiment of the Pavia division while trucks two and three drop their previous loads and return to the Tripoli box. So here's three and two, they're going back. Truck number one is going to carry one of the units of the Pavia, one of the regiments. So they're gonna come onto the map Okay, so the Allied player actually moving these units in here plays into what the Germans or the Axis player was actually hoping to see. Because now we can take a crack as the Axis of trying to destroy this unit before it can get back to Tobruk. So the Axis player moves forward. And he's going to attack here. The Ariette division right here is actually going to move going to come down here and go around. It's going to get through the delay box and end up right here. This guy is going to move up to here. Okay. So we moved these units, which is most of the division. So they moved through the delay box there. They had enough movement points to get there. So these guys will move up and join the Ariette regiment right there. These guys are going to move up to here. This unit is going to move here. Whoops, not that one. This one. This one's going to move here. Okay, so for Ariad, if you're wondering how it got there from over here, it used, it did, it used extended movement. So it had eight and it was basically um, one, two, 
four, seven, that's a plus two, plus one more for three, and then eight. So I haven't shown the terrain effects chart, but here it is. And you can see the movement points for non-MAC and MAC. And we have rough down here, and rough for MAC is two, and for non-MAC it's one. So that's how they got there. And so now we go to the combat phase and the German stack right here has a total attack strength of 28 and it's going to attack the weak second armor division that has a defense strength of 10. So you can see we have a four and a two and another four, so that is 10. And they have an attack strength of 28. I'm not gonna count it all up. You'll have to take my word for it. That's what it says in the book. So the base odds are two to one, but this is mod modified by a column shift for tanks because we have a tank rating of two for our best tank on the German side and the British tanks are all tank, tank quality one or zero in one case. And we also have an elite combined arm shift again. So that makes the final odds four to one. So we're gonna remove this, the uh, supply point for this guy that gets moved from the Africa core. This one gets expended. So it did have a range of five because it was stacked with the Africa Corps headquarters, one, two, three, four, five. So that's at the extent of its range. But if it's stacked with a headquarter, you can do it like that. So because it was stacked with the Africa Corps headquarter, it could do it. So the die roll again is a two, which as we know from our previous impulse is a DR2. So this time the allies the allied player is going to decide to retreat the two hexes and become disrupted rather than use the determined defense table. So they're just going to go one, two, and they get marked disrupted. And the Germans can advance two, so they stay right on their tail. Then we go to the Axis recovery phase. No units are disrupted or in retreat, so skip. Axis supply phase. All the Axis units can trace five hexes to a road and then all along the road to a friendly off-map box, so all units are in supply. The delay marker phase, the Axis only has one delay marker in place since we already have one right here that's already on the map. So we're gonna place another one in, uh, the other one rather, in hex 2315, right here, which is where we tried to put it before. And this time we roll, and again, roll a one and a six. So again, we have to remove it. All right, so now we go back to the allies and the allies in their initial phase, they're gonna roll for an event. They roll a nine, which gives them another resource point to replace the one they expended last impulse. Now the act, the allies uh, fortification that they started last turn is automatically completed. Normally you have to roll a die. In this case, you do not because it was already in a, it was in an um, anti-tank ditch hex, so that is automatically completed, and it's now a fortification, so we can put the fortification counter there. We move the rail and naval markers, so we can remove this. I actually didn't put a rail marker. I forgot to put a rail marker on the unit we moved to Mersa Matru last turn. Now we go to the Allied movement phase. At this point, the Allied player realizes that trying to stop the 5th Light and Arietta division, these two guys right here, the 5th Light and the Arietta, is going to be impossible, so he decides to head back as fast as he can. The units of the 2nd Armored Division are disrupted, but he can voluntarily put them in full retreat and move them their full movement allowance. Now they have some slow tanks in the 6 RTR, which is this one because they're captured Italian tanks. Can only reach uh, 2516 after paying a plus two to exit an enemy zone of control. So they get to go there. That's gonna be a full retreat. So they got, um, they got double whammy because they had to enter the zone of, exit the zone of control of the fifth light. And then they also got tripped up on the delay marker there. And then we, we do the same with this guy. And he's going to join his friend up here. And they'll both be marked in full retreat. And we're going to leave that one there as a speed bump 
to try and slow the Germans down. Sacrificial lamb. So now the supply point south of Geminis, which is here, is removed so it won't be captured. The MSU at Masseuse right here is kept in the area in case a counterattack's needed. We're going to keep the third Indian at the at Matilly to lend aid to the retreating second armor division if needed. Our truck unit up here is going to leave this guy alone. He's going to go over and grab this guy and drive him to Tobruk. This guy, because he was just dropped off, can move eight hexes, so he's going to move down here to Tamimi. This truck unit is going to pick up this, uh, this unit from the previous impulse and start heading towards Tobruk. And because of extended movement, it can get, whoops, whoa, it can get all the way along the coast road and get all the way here to uh, Acroma. Actually, no, that's wrong. That's one too far. It's right here. And we're going to use that resource point that we picked up and we're going to spend it and go back to zero and start another fortification building in Tobruk. So we're going to take our supply here from the Nile Delta, this guy right here. We're going to use naval shipping or coastal shipping to move it to Tobruk. Since our DRM is a negative six still, we roll a seven and that results in no anti-shipping attack on the convoy. So it arrives safely at Tobruk. Now we no longer have a combat unit in, in or adjacent to Benghazi, so we can't roll for more demolition over there. There is no combat phase because there is no combat. And so we go to the recovery phase. So the disrupted marker on the light tank at Agadabia is removed. So I'm gonna remove that. And then the, the units that were in full retreat, they, can rec they recover one level and are just now disrupted. Now you can leave them in full retreat if you want to so that they can automatically retreat, but this can be dangerous. So they're just going to use, they're just gonna, the, the allies are just gonna let them become disrupted. Now we do our supply phase. All the units can trace five hexes to a road and then all along the road to a friendly off-map box. So all units are in supply. The delay phase, both allied delay markers are already on the map. So there's none to place. He must roll for removal and rolls two twos. So delay marker number two, is removed. And that was the one by El Aguila. So that one has now been removed. And we're also going to remove number one voluntarily because it's not going to have any use where it is now that the Germans and the Italians are starting to move past it. And that ends the Allies' turn. So that's the end of the extended example of play. And here in the notes, uh, they wrote as ending thoughts, it says, I will end the extended example of play here at the start of the Axis player turn. Had the Allied player not left behind the light tank unit as a blocking force, the 5th Light Division would have caught up to the remaining Allied tank units and destroyed them. However, the Allied player has taken out two Allied mechanized units, assuming that that 4045 unit will be eliminated. And so they're in good shape. The good news for the Allies is that he was able to build two fortifications at Tobruk and has plenty of strength in the area to defend it. He should make sure he gets at least one tank unit inside the Permimina, preferably a Matilda tank, so that he is able to conduct a counterattack against any Axis stack that gets inside the perimeter. The Allied player should try to keep at least two supply points inside the Tobruk perimeter at all times. He'll need them for attack supply, for artillery support, shift in defense and for the plus one DRM when doing a determined defense. If the Axis player attacks Tobruk, you can burn through a lot of supply points very quickly. That along with four Australian brigades should give them a fair chance of holding out. So that is going to do it for this extended example of play. Um, I may do just a regular playthrough of this game after I have a little bit more time to um, both mess around with it and also put up some of these other videos I have in my queue. So it could be a little bit before that actually happens. But in the meantime, I do want to thank you guys, as always, for watching. I hope this was useful. I probably stumbled a little bit. It's hard to kind of read the book and move the pieces and 
you know, remember all the rules that are being cited and everything, but I did my best and hopefully it proves at least moderately useful for anybody who's actually watched through. Uh, and again, I appreciate you guys taking your time to, to watch my stuff. That is always appreciated. Uh, if you would consider liking, sharing, and or subscribing, that would also be very much appreciated. But even if not, like I said, I hope you got something out of it. So that's going to do it. My name's Joe. This is the Hexed Encounter channel. And until next time, as always, happy gaming.